Hi, my name is Tom Jablonski. I'm going to walk you through a demo of the chart of accounts and dimensions inside of Microsoft D uh, Dynamics Business Central. So I'm at my home screen here on my role center and I'm gonna go ahead and click on chart of accounts. So different than what you might have seen in other systems that you work in is inside of Business Central, we have the main account that would be built out to here. And then we would use dimensions in here to deal with other things that you might have done inside of your segmented chart of accounts and maybe your legacy system. So if you had a, a division, a department, and then an account, um, the account is this part of it. And then the other two segments would be dimensions that we'll go out and take a look at in just a moment. And so as we're looking at this, the concept behind it is, is rather than having thousands and thousands of accounts potentially, depending on how many different kinds of things we wanted to track, I end up with maybe 100 to 200 accounts. And then all of the layered in dimensions um, are things, are attributes that would be added as we do various transactions throughout the system. Um, the benefit of it is, is if I don't want to do a corporate uh, dimension. I don't have to fill in a bunch of zero, zero, zeros, which is generally what you had to do with those segments, right? Was zero, 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 and then my cash account. Here, I just don't call out the dimension related to that. Um, or you could actually create the zero, zero, zero dimension if that's what you wanted to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick search here. I'm going to use my magnifying glass and we're going to go bring up the dimensions. And this is where you can go out here and actually start to create the dimensions. And so again, these are predefined in our, our demo environment, but it's got business group out here and then a department. And then we can actually track different types of customer groups and even the area. And so all of these could be utilized to track data about my transactions throughout the system. Some of it's gonna be customer driven kind of stuff where this is gonna be a small, medium or a large customer. And so I could run financial statements to say, hey, how are our sales for our large customers versus our small customers? How are our sales within this department versus that department? How are our expenses from this department to that department? What does it look like overall for this business group versus that business group? And so that's the benefit of these is that we can come into here, click on the dimension there, and then we can go in and take a look at the different values that exist for this dimension. So we only have three departments that are built out into here. Um, but at the same time, it gives us that flexibility to go out here and actually review what's going on with all of our different things uh, in different areas of the system. So if I were to come in and start to drill into some of the info, I'm going to actually go down into our sales and expense section here. And I'm going to click on our rent expense. And so this is showing me all sorts of rent expense transactions going on for each of the periods. But again, so this is showing me globally across all of my dimensions. And then if I wanted to, I can actually show you that I've got the department code dimension already here and none of them are tied to it. But the point that I wanted to show is that you could go out here and actually um, you know, look at the different dimensions that are available to you and do restrictions into here, right? And so I could have put in a restriction for this dimension to say, hey, how does this rent expense look related to our customer group, small, medium, or large? Not a good example on this case, but I just wanted you to see. So what I'd like to do now is I'm going to back out of all of this and I'm going to go into a, a purchase order and we're going to go in and create a brand new purchase order and we'll click new. And I'm gonna create this to Fabricam. And again, my search lets me go in there, find that by the, the name rather than having to know their vendor number. And then I'm gonna look up the London swivel chair and say that we wanted to buy two of these. And then as I look all the way over here, this is where I can leverage my department code. And so from that perspective, I can go out here and say, hey, this should go into the production department. Um, and it, a customer group really isn't a good application, so I'm not going to worry about filling that one in. If I needed to hit that business group and I didn't see it here on my list, I could do a quick personalization to go ahead and add that field in. And so if I came out to here, clicked into this, I would be able to go out there and bring in that business unit so that I could go out there and make sure that I was hitting each of the dimensions that I needed to hit as I was doing my different transactions throughout the system. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. I didn't. <coughs> um, from that perspective, we can get back into our chart of accounts. Again, as we go in and we want to look at different reporting within the system, I'm going to just do a touch on our financial statements. This is our um, account schedule. That's where you go run your financial statements throughout the system. But if I were to click on my income statement, and I don't want to make a copy of this, but this is going to allow me to go out here and do a overview. And this is actually a live version of my income statement. And so what we can do within this is we get to start filtering out here based on some of these dimensions. And so I could go out here and say, hey, run me my financial statement for my department production. And then all of my net change information is going to change. If I were to go out here and say, let's run it for sales. Again, I finally get some data showing up into here and that's all good. The other thing that we can do um, within our system related to running our financial statements is it really kind of thinks of uh, data as in buckets of periods. It doesn't think of it as strictly just a month, right? And so the idea here is when I'm looking at this, I'm saying that I'm running my financial statement for a week right now, and it's showing me what week it's actually running. If I wanted to, I could run it for the month by just coming into here and clicking on month. And now as I go in there and say, hey, I would like to look at the next period or the previous period, right? I can use my, my keys up here to go ahead and switch between these periods. And the idea would be is the period now means month. I can change this value again and I could now change it to a quarter. And now I'm running this for the entire first quarter. And again, when I go to period and I say previous period, I'm now looking at the previous quarter, which was the fourth quarter of the prior year. So this is different than a lot of systems that I've dealt with in the past. I find this to be a really handy thing. You can get a daily financial statement, a weekly, a monthly, a quarter, a year, or by accounting period if you're on a fiscal year. And then these are drillable. And so I can click on this and it allows me to drill all the way back to the original documents that existed in the system. And I can actually get all the way into every entry related to this and look at the posted sales invoice. Or I could come in and look at the GL transaction entries. I'm going to go ahead and back out of this. And that is going to conclude our um, video for the uh, General Ledger Chart of Accounts. Thank you very much.